Is it possible to reverse engineer a CAD model from just a few images? With the subdivision modeling inside of Solid Edge, it is. Here you see we have a front and top view of a razor. The subdivision environment inside of Solid Edge gives us the ability to craft complex geometry and integrate organic shapes found in everyday lives that are not easily modeled with traditional methods. By using stylized shapes that can be subdivided for greater levels of detail and control, we can create a razor based on the few images we see here. We'll start out by creating a simple sphere at the origin of the part file. By selecting edges, vertices, or faces of a cage, we can easily begin to make edits to our shape. Here we'll elongate the sphere by pulling opposing faces. To add greater control over the shape, we'll use the split command to add additional edges and vertices to the cage. We can move the segments to a precise location if needed. In this example, we've added two smaller sections to opposing ends of the elongated sphere to give us more control in those areas. The scale command can be used to change the size of a face or body in one, two, or three dimensions, with the origin being controlled by the triad location. By using the X key on the keyboard, we can ensure that we are scaling in the correct direction and then make our edit to both ends of the model. After we scale the faces, we can then make a few adjustments to the model using the familiar tool of the steering wheel. Notice how our elongated sphere more closely matches the image shown here. To create the neck of the handle, we'll use a move option to lift up the cage face. The lift option adds faces to the model, leaving existing faces in their current positions and orientations as we move the selected elements. The segment box on the command bar allows us to find how many faces to add to the model as we lift. To adjust the size of the neck, we'll use the scale command and make our edits in one direction at a time. If we look more closely at the images, we'll notice that there's a bump detail at the back of the razor handle. To add this, we'll want to add some detail to the back portion of the handle. We'll use a combination of techniques we have previously explored, including the lift and scale commands. By utilizing the lift, scale, and move command, we actually end up creating an additional face 
that we will use to continue to create our bump feature at the end of our handle. And you can see the additional face created here. We'll now use the split command to split this newly created face into nine smaller faces, giving us greater control over how the finished model will look. Next, we'll raise the middle face up using the tip option. Using the tip option when making a move forces the connected faces to extend, trim, or change orientation resulting in the bump shape that we desire here. Next we'll apply a blend. By using the blend command, edges of a subdivision model can be sharpened or smoothed depending on the weight value applied. We want to maintain a smooth look to the model, so we'll apply a value of 3 here. Notice the resulting feature. In the subdivision environment, multiple bodies can be created in one instance of a subdivision feature. To create the head of the razor, we'll add in a basic torus shape. The number of major and minor segments as well as major and minor diameters can all be defined for this shape. We can then move the body to line up more closely with the background sketches. We can even use the steering wheel to rotate the model and change its orientation. Next I select the top of the cage with a few quick clicks. Use the steering wheel to start stretching the cage to more closely align with what I'm attempting to create. We can also select vertices and edges to move just those. In this case I'm readjusting the head of the razor to align more closely with my desired shape. Next I'll turn my background images back on to help me align the next part of the model. We'll start by creating another torus. This time we'll increase the number of major segments and decrease our minor diameter slightly. As we did before, we'll use the steering wheel to move and rotate the torus into position. Another option that's available with subdivision modeling is symmetric mode. When creating a model that has symmetry, we can start symmetric mode and work on one side of the model, letting Solid Edge mirror the modifications to the opposite side. Next, we'll select a few segments and use the delete key on the keyboard to shorten the arms to the necessary length. Notice the results occurred on both sides due to the fact that we're in symmetric mode. We'll now delete this face here and clean up the inside. To be able to make this a solid model later, we need to ensure that all of our subdivision geometry is fully enclosed. Here we can do that with the fill command. We simply select the edges that make up the open faces and close them in.
To smooth our model, we'll blend the newly created faces. Here we'll set the value to 2 to give us a more squared look. If we ever need to verify the blend values, we can use the show blend value command in the shortcut menu. This shows us all the values of the blends and whether they've been placed on edges or vertices. If we flip the model over, we'll notice we have a few bumps on the inside. We can simply adjust the edge of the cage, which then adjusts the model. So we're simply using our steering wheel again to make these minor adjustments. For those of you who have worked in synchronous, you'll notice the similarity that you do not have to be in synchronous to use this. Next, we'll switch to our front view and make a few minor adjustments to better align the model with the sketches. The last shape we'll create is a box which will represent the blades of the razor. Like our other shapes, we'll start this at the origin and then move it into position with the steering wheel. We'll finish up by making a few fine adjustments to get the look we want. Now that we've done creating geometry, we can stop the symmetry mode and close out of the subdivision modeling environment. Let's switch into the ordered environment and then toggle the subdivision bodies into design bodies. While we could have done everything in the ordered environment to begin with, I thought it was important to show that subdivision modeling is available in synchronous as well, which ultimately gives you the freedom to work the way you want. To create one solid body, we can use the union command and select the four separate design bodies. I've activated these bodies and to finish things off we'll use the round command and add a few blends between the arms and the razor blades. Placing these blends is just one example of some additional detail work you can do with this body. Whether you are an expert or inexperienced with CAD software, subdivision modeling makes it easy to develop high quality advanced shapes all within the solid edge environment and with no data conversion required. As you can see from our finished model here, we have been able to reverse engineer a model of a razor from two images inside of Solid Edge 2021.
If you would like to obtain some training on subdivision modeling, check out our new Solid Edge Advanced Modeling course on our online training page at designfusion.com. Simply click to enroll and you can find out the cost and you can get a complete overview of what's in the class by clicking here. Again, that's Solid Edge Advanced Modeling at designfusion.com and go to our online training page.